Welcome to the Live Fit Listens podcast, a safe space of growth, personal development, and overall wellness with your host, Olivia Catania, diving into the realms of all things health, conscious living, mental expansion, and much more. This podcast is designed to help you evolve into your best self and live fit. Let's get into the show. Hello, you guys. What's going on? Welcome back to the Live Fit Listens podcast. Today, we're on episode 96. I hope everyone is doing really well. I'm sending you guys so much love. I'm feeling very good today because I had such a wellness filled morning. Let me tell you, it's a Sunday and I feel like this is going to, this is my first time ever doing this. So I don't want to come across it like I did this every day. Like this is just a regular day. This was something special for me, but that's why I'm feeling so like lit up about it. And I definitely want to get into the habit of this on a weekly basis. Basically for Christmas, my mom got me a bundle of like 10, like a package of 10 yoga classes at this one studio. Um, and so I've been wanting to be consistent with going like once a week for yoga because I really like either doing Pilates or yoga, like at least once a week, just to incorporate some low impact movement and help with mobility and stretching and like kind of more body weight strength and all that sort of stuff. Like I love it so much. So this morning I've been really going on like the weekends cause usually I'm in the gym throughout the week. And so this morning I went to my first ever hot yoga class and I just have never done a hot yoga session and it was so awesome. The room was like a hundred and it got up to 107 degrees, but I feel like on average it was more so like 105 degrees. But dude, your girl was freaking sweating and it was more of like an invigorating, like energizing yoga. And usually when I've gone to like indoor yoga classes, they're much more kind of calmer for mainly just kind of slow stretching and all that sort of stuff, which it still was, but there was just more kind of power flows involved, more balanced work. And like the music was more upbeat. The instructor was more upbeat and it just was more it was just so invigorating and it was so fun and like I loved the music and just the instructor was like when we went into warrior run she would just like word things in so much more of like an energizing way like she'd be like okay bring that you know your right foot up between your hands and like shoot up up to the sky with your breath up to bring your hands up like just like I don't know her wording to things was just so much more fun and it just felt more of like a power flow and I really loved it and I was freaking sweating and I also loved it because I've been getting into sauna lately lately. I've just been more in my wellness era, which I'm basically describing right now, but I've been sauna, like going in the sauna at my gym a few times a week, the past couple of weeks. So I feel like it was perfect timing because I'm into that kind of sauna feel and like being in that flow and like trying to get a sweat on. So I loved how much I sweat. It's such a good detox for me, especially in the winter months in Utah, because it is so cold and dry. Like I rarely actually sweat during my workouts. Like it was just so much fun. I feel like I had some really good stretching in there. Like my hips are so freaking tight. I was stoked to be working on balance moves because I feel like that always helps with all of like any and all active hobbies, you know, that you'd like to do. So it felt so good. And then it honestly made me be so excited to gold cold plunge. So this, I honestly had this like routine in my head from last night. I was like, okay, I'll go to yoga. And then after I'll go to the gym and cold plunge because they're kind of close to each other. So after yoga, I was already feeling so good. Endorphins were flowing. Then I went and cold plunged at my gym because there is a pool that they don't heat. And it, I don't know if you guys know, but like on YouTube and on Instagram, I would talk about how I would try to cold plunge fairly often in the summer. And I was pretty consistent with it there. But then when the months got colder, I was like, I don't really know if I want to do it, blah, 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 because I thought it was going to be so much worse, but it's really not that much worse. It like feels the exact same because you're just going in and being numb essentially. So I was honestly looking forward to the cold plunge in like hot yoga because I was so hot. I felt like I was like suffocating and then that felt so good. I did it for like two and a half minutes and it just feels so good. And that was only my second time cold plunging um, because I did it for the first time like a few days ago. But it just is so good. Like I feel so invigorated afterwards and like empowered and it gives me such a rush and it's like just such an insane dopamine hit. And then after I go into the hot tub, like five minutes later, once I've kind of been able to have the blood rush back and like, then I vibe in the hot tub. It just was like, we're in our wellness era. Like, I don't know how else to say it. I'm in my wellness era and I absolutely love it. And like, I really want to stay on this. And like, I want this to be my Sunday ritual, like my Sunday church. Like I want to go to yoga because they have like an eight and a nine thirty class. So do one of those gold, go cold plunge, go in the hot tub and then just like go about my day. I just feel so good. I just love taking care of myself. Like those are the things that make me feel so freaking good. So that's honestly my gratitude for this episode. I'm feeling 
feeling so thankful that a my mom got me those yoga classes that I'm able to go to yoga that I have a studio near me that I really enjoy um and I'm thankful to be able to cold plunge that my gym has that option there that there's you know they have a pool that they don't heat and just also having them be able to be so close to each other like it was just perfect and I really feel so blessed and privileged to have this like little perfect setup and so I really want that to be kind of like my Sunday ritual <laughs> like it's making me so happy and excited again just thinking about it because that's how freaking good it made me feel like it is insane it's always the things that we don't want to do that make us feel our best it's it's truly insane it's like the things that feel so hard in the moment or things that feel like such a bear to get ourselves to do like they are always the most rewarding they are always the things that are helping us grow they are always the things that are helping us evolve they are always the things that are making us better and I just find it so interesting because it's the things that we don't want to do up front it's kind of like that quote my dad always says pay now or pay later and I feel like it's kind of always that I feel like that's like a fundamental law of the universe in a way it's like you're always going to have because everything has checks and balances that's why I always say the yin yang symbol represents so much life to me because it's like everything checks out all the time you know it's like you can't always you kind of got to pay somewhere so like these wellness habits are things that are usually healthy and good for you you don't want to do them. So you pay up front by getting over the hump of not wanting to do them, but then you get to have the reward of it later by feeling so good afterwards. Whereas opposed to if you choose the easy route of watching TV or getting, you know, McDonald's drive through, it's like, you're not paying up front because you have that convenience, but you're paying later for the sake of your health on the back end, which is just crazy. Okay. That was kind of a little side spiel, but anyways, that's my gratitude for today. Before this episode, I wanted to actually talk about body image and I really don't even have a big, like I literally have three bullet points on my outline on Google Docs. Like I kind of just want to have a conversation, a candid conversation, a raw conversation with you guys and a little bit of a heart to heart because I don't really know if I did. It was clearly a while ago because I don't remember it, but I don't really think I've done a full episode on body image. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but if anything, that was like over a year ago now at this point. So I wanted to touch on kind of my journey with body image and kind of speak on my two cents um, to maybe help you guys who may be struggling with body image. Because if you don't know, I used to really struggle with body image actually pretty severely. And I think honestly, everyone does, especially like younger girls as we're going through puberty and in high school and our body changes so much. And it's like, I think, you know, it's super common to, to, struggle with body image in some, some sense. So I just kind of wanted to share my two cents on everything and, and hopefully share some insights of how, what has helped me with my body image, because I truly feel the most at peace I've ever felt. And I think a part of that is attributed to the mindset work I've done, the self work that self love work, excuse me, that I've done. Um, just me getting more connected with myself, developing a relationship with myself. I think I owe a lot of that to those things, but I also think a lot I owe a lot of my improved body image to also just the fact that I've gotten older as well. So I want to take a second and kind of rewind to my journey with body image because back in the day, it feels so funny bringing this up because it's so long ago. Like I, I carry no resentment, no anything towards it, but I just know how pivotal, pivotal, why can't I speak today? Pivotal and impactful that point in my life was and this is kind of where everything like truly it is kind of where everything stemmed from in some sense or another like either directly or indirectly but back when I was 16 17 my first ever boyfriend my first person I ever kissed um, we dated for like a year and he cheated on me and I remember it like wrecked me all this sort of stuff I was like that was truly still to this day the most heartbroken I've ever been just simply because I was so naive and so I, I had no idea what love felt like. I had no idea what heartbreak felt like. I had no idea how to move past um, loving someone because I've only loved one person in that way at that point in time. So the thought of like moving on without them was like so unfathomable to me at the time. But so anyways, that whole experience really left me with so much insecurity, so much insecurity that I would like to admit. And it just made me feel, I mean, I was 17 at the time. Like I was already dealing with when you're a girl in high school, there's already so many comparisons of who's the hot girls in school and what do their bodies look like and who's maturing faster. And I always had this more of an athletic, thin, slim build. I was never really curvy. I didn't have a butt. I never had boobs. Like I was just more athletic and I was always a late bloomer. 
So I didn't like get my period until late of, of freshman year of high school. I just was a late bloomer and I just was more athletic. I didn't have the traditional stereotypical like womanly figure, which I feel like boys at that age are like googly eyes over because they're like, what a girl? What is this? Who is this? You know? So then having been cheated on, it led me to feel super even more insecure myself because I was like, damn, like clearly I wasn't enough physically for him to feel satisfied, even though it's not what it's about. I could do a whole episode on cheating, but like that's not what it was about. But my little 17 year old brain, that's what I thought it came down to was that like I wasn't attractive enough. You know, I didn't have big enough boobs or big enough butt or a, a slim enough waist. I just took it as something was wrong with the way that I looked. So unfortunately, That's what led me down the rabbit hole towards weight training, which I did start to dabble into weight training like a few months before this happened. But then this all happened. The whole thing happened. I thought my life was falling apart. I was like, oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. And so in my mind, you know, I was struggling a ton with insecurity at that point, like I said. And at that point, I was looking to other fitness influencers on social media. Mainly, it sounds so shallow to admit now, but I'm being so brutally honest because I think maybe someone can find resonance in this. Um, And it's the truth of my journey. But I saw these people on social media who built up like thicker legs and a bigger butt through weight training. And they essentially got curves and they looked more like a woman and all this sort of stuff. The stereotypical association and connotation with what a woman's body is supposed to look like, I should say. And so to me, that gave me hope because I was like, oh, like I can change my body. Then I'll be attractive. Then I'll be hot. Then I'll be be desirable. And it was 100 percent for the male gaze like because I felt so undesirable by being cheated on, I guess. Um, So it made me. I I just saw those women on social media and I was like, damn, like I want to look like that. Like that's when I'll feel confident. That's when I'll feel like I can love myself. That's when I'll feel desirable. That's when I'll feel pretty enough. And all this, all this sort of stuff. I thought like if I achieve that body, that's when I'll be able to love myself. Then I'll never, I I truly thought that I would never struggle with confidence again. I would never struggle with self-love again. I would never struggle with feeling less than or with insecurities. I truly thought that changing the way that I looked would be kind of this somehow, you know, seamless plan for me to feel all those things that I wasn't feeling on the inside. And so then from that point forward, that's when I was like running my body into the ground for truly the next two years. I was so obsessed, laser focused, really because I was acting from self-hate. I was acting from insecurity. I was acting from the need for validation. Like it's honestly, it's like making me a little bit, I don't want to cry, but like it's bringing up emotion in me because I know how hard I was honestly trying to almost run away from the feelings that I was feeling inside and trying to desperately grab and reach for the feelings that I really wanted to be feeling. And I, it totally was acting out of desperation of the need for validation and of trying to change my body out of self-hate because I didn't like the way that I was rather than trying to evolve from a place of self-love And it's always weird for me to revisit this point in my life because it was like I struggled so much internally, but no one really knew because everyone's just like, oh, she's just upset with obsessed with fitness, you know, like, oh, she just likes to lift like her parents like to live like that's probably where she got it from. I just no one really knew that it still was the aftermath after effects um, from that breakup that had happened at that point like two years ago. Because I do truly do feel like being cheated on, especially at such a young age, and then especially from your first true love, it's like what I thought was love at that time. It just hits you in a different point because you're at such a developmental part of your life again, especially being 16. Like I was such at a vulnerable, malleable, vulnerable place at that point in my life when that whole cheating thing happened. And so I it, it kind of really did mess me up mentally in a way. And I carried that with me for a long time. And so it wasn't until like I was running my body into the ground. I went through a bulking phase, a cutting phase, a bulking phase, a cutting phase. You know, I gained all this muscle. I got shredded, all this sort of stuff. And I, I vividly remember, I believe it was 2019. I had like a legitimate breakdown in my basement. I'm so happy to bring you guys this episode. I really hope and pray that this reaches the people that it, who need to hear it because 
it sounds so shallow and so cliche, but like this was such a huge thing and bear that I went through in the biggest, one of the biggest learning lessons I've had in my life. And again, it sounds so shallow, like it's about body image and all stuff, but it's like, this was truly how this whole situation that's spanning over literally the course of like five years is truly how and when I learned to love myself. And I think that is such an integral part of life. Life gets so much beautiful when you more beautiful when you can love yourself. And I truly do feel like I went through that because a part of my life's purpose is to be an advocate for self-love. Like I, I truly do feel that way. So anyway, circling back in 2019, I had a breakdown in my basement because I was, I gained all this muscle. I went through a cutting phase. I gained more muscle, but then I gained a lot of body fat as well for me, what felt like a lot to me. And my hormones were all out of whack at this point because I was training so hard. I was also in college. I was trying to make friends. And so the only way to do that, I went to Penn State in case you didn't know. The only way to really do that was to drink and go tailgating. So I was drinking a lot of alcohol, eating a lot of food, training really hard. My cortisol levels were through the roof. I was studying, trying to get a 4.0 GPA. You know, I just was working so hard. And I was super inflamed, higher body fat percentage than I wanted to. And I was honestly 15 to 17 pounds heavier than I am right now, which I feel like kind of the leaner you are, the more weight that feels like, if that makes sense. There's like, it, it feels like a bigger difference. And I remember I was trying so hard, so hard to lose that body fat. And I was struggling so hard. I could not do it. I wasn't doing it the right way and all this sort of stuff. And I remember I just had a breakdown because I've written everything hit me. I was like, I am just tired. I am tired. I it was also almost kind of like this harsh, this crash of harsh reality because I just thought like over the course of those previous two, two and a half years after being cheated on, that was kind of my golden ticket. That was my glimmer of hope. That was the light at the end of the tunnel. I was like, if I just make my body look like this, I'll be happy. If I just make my body look like this, I'll be confident. If I just make my body look like this, I'll be able to feel worthy. I'll be able to never struggle with insecurity. And so I just thought that once I look like this certain way, then I will feel this way. And it just got to a point after those two and a half years, I kept trying and trying and trying and I would be making some progress. I'm like, I still don't feel confident. I still don't feel secure. I still don't feel like I love myself, like all this sort of stuff. It just kept happening over and over again. And I was like, well, just keep going. It's going to get better. Just keep going. Once you change your body, it'll get better. Just keep going. Once you make a little bit more progress, you'll feel those things. And it was, ended up kind of being a rat race where the dollar was at the end of a string that just always kept moving. The target kept moving. And I never was quite able to achieve what I thought was achievable of changing my body to then feel a certain way. It's like the thing was, is that those feelings never came. It didn't matter how much I changed my body, how much muscle I put on, how much body fat I lost. Those feelings never came because I never did any inside internal work within myself. And so that was kind of my biggest breakdown because I felt so defeated. I was like, I've been killing my, this has been my life for two, two and a half years of being in the gym, being meticulous with what I'm eating, all of this, like checking off every single box every day, making sure I'm showing up doing the cardio that I have programmed. And I just still felt like shit inside. I still looked in the mirror and I could not stand what I looked like. I still was not confident. I still was craving validation. I just still felt the same way I felt two years ago even though I had put so much work in, when I looked at myself in the mirror, I still was staring at that same hurt 16 year old in the mirror. Don't get me wrong. I, I developed respect for myself, trust for myself. I developed confidence in my work ethic and my discipline, right? But I didn't have that internal fulfillment that I was craving when I was 16. And I just remember feeling so hopeless. I felt so defeated and I felt so frustrated. And I honestly felt worried because I was like, did I choose, kind of not choose the wrong thing, but like kind of did I bet on the wrong thing in a way? You know, like I was like, was this wrong of me to think that maybe this isn't the way that I'm actually going to be, you know, cultivating these feelings that I've been trying to seek and find outside of myself? Maybe 
it's not in changing my body. Maybe it's not in the gym. And so I felt frustrated because I was like, am I ever going to feel these feelings that I'm wanting to feel? You know, did I just waste time? Was there another thing I was supposed to be pursuing and seeking? And, you know, this is what eventually led me to, and this is why this is honestly such what I feel like is a beautiful story um, and why kind of everything has piggybacked off that one situation of being cheated on. Um, because then it got to a point where I don't really remember the specific aha moment, but I just know it eventually, I think I actually saw something on YouTube about practicing gratitude. And then I clicked on that. And then I went down a rabbit hole towards like affirmations. And then I discovered this world of like journaling is kind of where it started for me, which I ironically was always, I loved the idea of diary keeping. Like I used to keep a diary when I was younger. Like I had so many different ones of them. I've always loved stationary. I've always loved that kind of stuff. Um, and and so I've always kind of been, I've, I've just have been fond of kind of diaries and journals and things like that. So when I saw this online, I was like, oh, like that could be fun. You know, I, I've always liked taking diaries. Like maybe I should try this journaling thing out. Um, and try to focus more so on like mindset components. And that's what opened up this whole world to the fact that it's what's going on inside of you, not what's going on outside of you. And that mindset really is everything. And that if you want to feel a certain way, you have to cultivate it from within. We all have that life source within us. So you have to cultivate it within because you can never fulfill any internal voids with external fillers. And I think the best way to describe this, if you remember when you were a kid, we would have that little like cage thing that would have different shapes. And then you would have the other shapes in like the shape of a 3D toy. There would be like a triangle, a circle or square. And you would have to try to fit the corresponding, um, you know, shape into the actual shape of the little cage thing there and to get it to go through into the basket. And I like to visualize it as like these internal voids that we feel, right. Or just any, like emotions are so internal. Um, fulfillment, passions, those are all so internal. So if you're trying to basically find self-love confidence in, you know, from something inside of yourself, you can never change something outside of you to get that feeling within. Cause that's like you trying to put a square block into the round hole of the cage. It's never going to go in. It's never going to quite fit. There's always going to be gaps because it's not, it's not of the same kind. So if you want to feel certain feelings, which could be anything, if you want to feel successful, if you want to feel competent, if you want to feel beautiful, if you want to feel confident, if you want to feel anything, you need to cultivate those things solely from things within you, not from anything outside of yourself, because those things, anything outside of you is always fleeting. It's always shifting. The one constant in life is the fact of change, is the component of change. Everything around you at some point is going to shift, is going to evolve, is going to change. There's everything is constantly evolving. That's like the core theory, the core principle, the core law of life. So that's the problem when you're trying to put these, use these external things for internal fulfillments, because eventually, even if they fit temporarily, that's the key. It's temporary. They're going to leave. They're going to shift. They're going to morph. They're going to leave at some point in time. It's not constant. It's not steady. So any sort of validation or anything that you're craving needs to come from yourself on the inside if you want it to be from a secure source and if you want it to be unwavering. And so honestly, that realization of like, hey, I've been doing so many things on my outside. I've changed the way I look and it still hasn't done anything. Maybe it's about going inside to change the way I'm feeling about myself. And so that's when I went to writing gratitude lists because that just obviously helped to heighten my spirit and feel just more content and fulfilled in what I was experiencing on the day today because I just felt grateful and I was also using gratitude towards what my body can do for me and all that sort of stuff that I can see, taste, hear, smell, all that sort of stuff just allowed me to kind of honestly get me to touch grass a little bit because I was so so lost in the superficial of like, cause I just thought everything was about the way you looked because that was like, what was, that was the trauma I really essentially gathered from that traumatic experience of being cheated on, to be honest. 
And then I use affirmations as well to try to help to force feed myself positive thoughts about myself, about my body, about loving who I am. Um, and it just helped me try to get into a better habit of being kinder to myself because I honestly was just mean to myself. I would constantly be body checking. I would just be telling myself, you know, like you're still not skinny enough. Your abs aren't popping enough. Your butt's not big enough. I would just constantly always be picking myself apart. I was my biggest critic rather than my biggest cheerleader. And it's really important to be your biggest cheerleader because no one else is going to do it the way that you can. And it's so important to have that affirmation from yourself. Of course, your loved one should be giving it to you as well, but you above anyone need to be giving it to yourself because your word is the most impactful for yourself. Yeah. So that's really where it all started was just my gratitudes and affirmations. I used to call it appreciations and affirmations. That was like my initial first, first, first ever journaling prompt. I'd write a list of things I'm grateful for, writing a list of positive affirmations about myself. And then I kind of just kept compounding from there. And that's when I really made effort, like a conscious effort towards reframing my thoughts towards myself and get in the habit of thinking kinder thoughts because the thing that's like the funny thing about body image it's like we think it's this absolute thing that's like truth that like you are overweight or you are underweight or you are not muscular enough or you are too muscular when really it's really just our perception of how we look it's not that we're one way or the other way or not this way or that way it's simply our perception of it that's making us have a quote unquote bad body image day or struggling with body image so it does so much to change your perception around yourself meaning it really goes back to 100% your mindset and what your thoughts are surrounding yourself and I remember on a podcast episode I actually remember this so clearly it was from the grow or die podcast with Justin Haley or Mahaley or something um and it was one of the, from like 2020 I think it was and he said for every negative thing you say about yourself you need to follow it up with three kind things to yourself and I like actually did this exercise and it helped me so much just to get into the habit of a not only being aware of my thoughts more but two being able to take control over my thoughts and then three reframing it because the thing is is like the momentum of thoughts is powerful so powerful it can be a amazing if you have a positive momentum going or it could be detrimental if you have negative momentum going. So if you're like someone who has the habit, because that's all it is, our thoughts are just habits. And when you really recognize that, that's when you can really take your power back and make your mind a more beautiful place again. Because a lot of us, it's super common to be in the habit of thinking of negative thoughts about ourselves. because somewhere around the, some way down the line, someone thought that if you were kind to yourself and were confident, that meant that you were conceited and egotistical and selfish. Well, that's not the case. Like we should, it should be normalized to love yourself. It should be normalized to feel confident in yourself. Like those things shouldn't be seen as conceited or egotistical or selfish. Like those are our birthright. Those are things we all should be feeling. It should be normal for you to say thank you when someone gives you a compliment instead of brushing it off or derailing it or, you know, not accepting it. Like those are the things that should be normal. So essentially so many of us are in the habit of, you know, being so rude to ourselves. So if you can actually catch that, be aware of that, and then make the conscious effort to change the thoughts that you're, you're habitually thinking to yourself. And you're basically like reframing your relationship with yourself. It's kind of like if you had this enemy in high school and like you guys always, or, or even like your sister, I feel like we've all gone through phases with siblings where you become closer with them and not so much closer. Like I'm sure we've all had fighting bouts with siblings where you guys just like aren't vibing, you aren't close, you're kind of mean to each other. And so it's like, if you guys want to work on your relationship together, you guys need to put effort into being kinder to one another to kind of reframe and readjust that relationship and to make it something that's more prosperous and like a healthier relationship. It's the same exact thing that you need to do with yourself. You need to look at it the same way. So like instead of treating yourself like an enemy and being so mean to yourself, it's like you need to actually literally work on your relationship with yourself. And that starts by being kinder to yourself, right? That's thinking kinder thoughts, that's saying kinder thoughts to you in the Mirror. So that's like a first huge exercise to do, but you guys have to be diligent with it. You can't do it sometimes. Like it has to be every single time you cut yourself. Cause again, we need to practice self-awareness. We need to think about the things we're thinking about every time you catch yourself saying, 
wow, I look so ugly today. You need to stop, put on the freaking mother trucking brakes and you need to say, "Uh uh-uh, that was not positive. That was not self-serving. That was not kind. So now I need to reframe myself. I actually love your shirt today. You look super cute with those earrings on and your hair looks good. Done. Also, another great thing for like a bridge point, because I feel like sometimes it's hard to go from body negativity all the way to body positivity. You can go to body neutrality. So things like that kind of what I was saying of like, I like your shirt. Those earrings are cute. And I like the ruffles on your socks. You know, they're not like totally gassing yourself up. Essentially, they're kind of more like neutral points um, that I feel like can help you with a stepping stone to help you work up to more of like a body positive self love kind of narrative. And I honestly want to keep running with this building a relationship with yourself point because I think it is so important because When you do those things, because that's what I think that one of the biggest root like causes of these poor body image days and like being so mean to yourself, it's like you really need to look at it as you would have a relationship with anyone else. If you're constantly mean to someone, you're not like spending intentional time with them. You're not getting to know them. You're not like recognizing the things that makes them beautiful. Obviously, you're like not going to like them. You're not going to fuck with them. You're not going to want to be like in their space. And I think that's unfortunately a lot of people's internal spaces with themselves. So to like further that conversation of developing a relationship with yourself by practicing being nicer to yourself with kinder thoughts. Now think about how you would progress a normal relationship with a new person at school. It's like first you start to be nice to them. You give them compliments. Now you check in with them more. You ask them how you're doing. You ask them about their day, right? And you can do that with yourself via journaling, spending time in stillness, meditating, right? Just spending time with yourself. It's the same way as you would, like you would do the same thing to cultivate a relationship with another person. So that's like a huge thing. And then also like spending time with yourself in the sense of like, go on dates with yourself, do things alone, go to a coffee shop, do work at a coffee shop, like things like that, where it's like truly, this is what I mean when I kind of always preach about making a relationship with yourself. That's what I mean. Like do the things you would do with other people, but do it with yourself. Because when you develop a relationship with yourself, that's just as you would when you get to know another human, you can't love someone you don't know. So it's like, how do you expect yourself to love yourself if you don't even know who you are? You don't spend time with you. You don't get to know yourself. You don't recognize the things that are beautiful. It's like, to be honest, everyone has good qualities and bad qualities. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. And so if you're focusing on one person's, all of their weaknesses, obviously you're going to be like, damn, they're a shitty person. Like, I don't want to be around them. But if you take time to get to know their beautiful parts and like what makes them tick and their passions and their character and their smile and their laugh and all those sort of things, like that's what makes you grow to love the person. And of course, that's not to say we throw out people's weaknesses you learn to love those too but I'm saying it's like if you never give their strengths the time of day you're never going to feel inclined to get to know them and develop a relationship with them and and love them so you need to do that same thing with yourself of getting to know who you are your strengths what makes you tick you know getting to know how you think how you speak all this sort of stuff so that you then can actually develop a relationship with yourself and then therefore actually love yourself And I know this seems kind of off topic from body image, but it really directly correlates because that's what gets me through on the days where I'm not feeling as confident because like to this day, I guess circling back when I thought I never would struggle with body image ever again when I changed the way I look, to be honest, I probably have like what I would kind of consider to be my dream body back in the day. Like 16 year old me would be pretty stoked to see how I look like right now. And I still struggle with body image. Like that's another thing I want to say. If you guys are out there who look up to me and think that I'm like, you know, maybe you admire my physique or whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm sure she is always confident and always feels good in her skin. No, that's not true. These bad body image days still come find me. But the thing is, there's they're not nearly as frequent as they used to be. And also they're not nearly as crippling as they used to be. My day used to be ruined if I did not, if I was not happy with the way that I looked in the mirror, my, all of my worth, all of my everything, validation, confidence, everything was contingent on if I looked okay, if I felt like I looked okay in the mirror that day. And my mood would be wrecked for the rest of the day if I didn't feel like I looked good that day. Like, it's so true. Like, I, my mood would be wrecked. And so they used to be so crippling, so consuming. And so doing this work of forming a relationship with yourself, of being kinder with yourself to therefore develop genuine self-love with yourself, it makes the bad body image days way less frequent because my confidence is way more unwavering because I've gotten to know my character. I've gotten to know my heart. I've gotten to know what makes me beautiful. I've gotten to know what I love about myself. And that's what kind of keeps me in my corner. And those are the things that make me always 
recognize the beauty that I have that is so much deeper than my surface that is internal. And I've learned to, I have more of like a loyal relationship with myself now, just like I would do with my best friend. It's like, I'm loyal to me. I'm on my team because I've taken the time to develop a relationship with myself. So I'm not just going to abandon myself and say, yeah, you look like effing trash in the mirror. Like you're scum. You're worth nothing. Like, no, like I'm on my team now. I'm always going to be rooting for myself. And I always try to make myself feel better like I would a friend. And I also am aware of the fact that my worth has nothing to do with my body. So even if on days that I don't love the way that I'm looking that day, I'm not as like crippling because I know it's not that deep and I know that I'm still worthy. I know that I'm still desirable just because I'm me, because it's a birthright, because of my character, because of my honesty, because of my heart, because of my compassion, because of my empathy. Like those are the things that make me beautiful. Those are the things that make me I kind of want to say a valuable human being, even though we're all valuable just at our, at our birthright. But I'm just trying to say like, I've shifted what I valued now. I've shifted instead of valuing so much my external appearance, I value the kind of person I am because of those, that's what people remember you by. They remember you by the energy that you carried in the room. They remember you by how you treated them. They remember you by the kindness that you displayed. They remember you by the awareness that you had in the room and of making other people feel heard and seen. It's like, that's what they remember you for. Like, if you think about it, I don't remember any random person I saw at the beach who had like a banging body. Like, I don't, I can't think of one person right now on the top of my head that like I saw, oh, two years ago, there was this girl and bull. No, like, I don't, I don't remember that. But I can tell you, I can remember how people felt, how I felt in their energy, how they carried themselves. I can remember remember how they, you know, was super kind to the quieter person in the group in the corner of the room. Like those are the things that speak volumes. Those are the things that transcend time. Those are the things that are long lived. And those are the things that leave an impact. And those are the things that actually really matter. And remembering that has allowed me to not get so consumed with the surface level of things. So I kind of want to also just kind of blow through a few things that also help me with body image as well just like mindset shifts I guess if you will and also maybe kind of some mental exercises a big one for me is really thinking about what my body does for me um I've also have kind of already touched on these so I don't really have a ton left but like doing really focusing on what my body does for me is huge like how my body shows up thinking about the fact that I have all five of my senses that my body is able to walk me from my bed to my shower that I'm able to prepare myself my own meals, the fact that I'm able to even be in the gym, the fact that I have all of my mobility, like those, that is something that should be so celebrated and really focusing on being grateful for what my body can do for me rather than the way that it looks helps me a ton. Another thing is expressing more gratitude to my body. So again, this kind of goes hand in hand with just being kinder to myself, but like being kinder to my body, like when I had a killer hard workout, I am taking time to say thank you to my body. In my morning meditations, I'm telling myself, I love you. I love you, Olivia. I love my body. I'm, I'm so thankful for my health today. I'm thankful for just my body being able to stick with me. Like just expressing gratitude helps me a ton. And I've been actually really enjoying doing that, especially after heavy leg days when I've had like more intense sessions. I will do like a cool down stretch and then take a few minutes in stillness and like child's pose and really thank my body for showing up for me that day. Another thing that helps me as well, especially when I was in the thick of trying to heal my my body image is I would think about myself as a kid, to be honest, or if 15 year old me was staring at me in the face, you know what I tell her? Yeah, like, you know, you still look like shit. Like, no, like, would I be there and, and talk negatively to the way her body looked? Like, would I make fun of her? Absolutely not. Like it that alone just helps me as well being like okay how would you because at the end of the day we all have our inner child within us you know and and th that's what's always the thing that's seeking validation and wanting to feel accepted and all this sort of stuff so you just you know accepting your body on behalf of your inner child is really healing for your inner child, but also for the relationship with your body, you know, and knowing, remember like when you're being mean to yourself in the mirror, when you're being mean to your body in the mirror, like you're being mean to that little girl inside, which to me just makes me sad. And I don't think it's constructive. Another thing I think about is 
that your body's going to be with you throughout the whole rest of your life, you know? So it's not about how it works. It's about its function. It's about longevity. It's about how long it can show up for you. And so taking care of it out of love for that longevity aspect. I don't know about you, but I want to live a long, healthy, happy life to get the most out of life. So being kind to myself, not only with thoughts and with the way that I'm speaking to it, but also treating it well in the gym, taking care of it, you know, all that sort of stuff helps me keep in mind kind of the main intention for why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like it's not to be mean to myself to run my body in the ground. Like I'm supposed to be acting out of self love for the sake of being able to live a longer, happier, healthy life by taking care of my body. Another thing is especially a majority of people that listen to me are females. So hello, a lot of you guys are sisters. We're all girls here. And so um, another thing is thinking about how absolutely baffling it is about the power of a woman's body. The fact that we can literally bring life into this dimension, into this planet is absolutely insane. And I don't know why women are, do not all of us have like a Nobel Peace Prize or some shit. Like we literally can do what nothing else can. Like it's only the female species. I don't know if any, that's actually a good question. Can any males and any other, like of any other male animals, can any males make life? I don't think so. So that is something that's so powerful that's so enchanting that's so magical that we can literally like we are the portal to wherever whatever you believe where these souls come from we literally are matching a soul and creating their body like that is so beautiful that we are the portal for that occurrence to take place like the closest thing to pure magic that we have on this planet I love it. And so I just think about how beautiful that is and how powerful that is of the human female body. And that just also makes me have more grace with my body as well when things are changing, especially through different parts of my cycle. It's like we are the free flowing beings. We're not supposed to look like statues. We're not here to perform. We're not the hunters. We're the gatherers. Like we're the girl, we're the people to nurture. We're the people to create life, right? And that's something that deserves grace and patience. And that deserves something that deserves honor for that, for that bodily process. And I, that has allowed me to be so much prouder of my body and be have way more grace with my body as well especially when I went through the whole situation of losing my period kind of going with that the last little thing that I have is again I think about that that my body is my soul's home like we this is when I kind of get into my spiritual aspect but like we're on this earth for a temporary time and whether you think so or not you know whether you believe we chose our bodies which I do I feel like I believe we choose this body that we came into, I believe we choose this life that we came into, whether you believe that or not, maybe you believe that you just so happen to have this body. Either way, everything happens for a reason. So, you know, have it be coincidence. Like this is the body that you were given and you only have one of them for the rest of your life. So you might as well freaking love it. And also I think that's a beautiful thing that like your body is your soul's home. Like that's something that deserves to be given love. And when you look at it in that fond light of like, wow, that's actually a really beautiful service of my body to house my soul for this life experience. It gives it like a whole different depth and dimension of the purpose of your body I just think like we're not, of course, with society's expectations, like it's just the stereotype for the woman to be this goddess of beauty, this epitome of beauty and to look a certain way. But it goes so much deeper than the way that we look and the way that we carry ourselves as women is so beautiful. It just gives me the chills. It's so empowering. It truly is our power. And we have so much power in being a woman, in being a female and embracing that energy. Like that's when you fully can step into the full power that we all have rather than being so focused on the little teeny minutia details of the way that we look. Like that's not where the true depth of our power lies. Our true depth of our power lies in who we are, our character, how we handle ourselves. Like that's when we can fully tap into our potential and power that we each carry as a woman. So I think that's everything that I can think of off the top of my head that I wanted to say because I, like I said, don't really have anything written on my outline right now. Um, But I just, my biggest moral of the story is because I wish someone told me this sooner, even though I know it would be such a hard pill. Um, 
to swallow is that you can't just by changing the way you look and listen, I'm not even, I'm not demonizing getting work done, but this is also in this conversation. Even if you think in getting work done, cosmetic surgery is going to give you true fulfillment and confidence and vanish all insecurities. Like I, it's just, that's not true. I'm not saying to not get those things done each to their own, but I'm just saying we have to do the internal work. We have to do the healing. We have to release the trauma on the inside of the people who told us that we're not enough. We need to release those things to actually be able to feel the feelings we've always wanted to feel because it's about cultivating them from the inside. We grow it from inside of us. It's not about gathering them from something outside of us and put them inside. It's everything. It's all happening inside of us. It's about healing within to feel those feelings that we've always wanted to feel. It has nothing to do with what's going on outside of us. And if I knew that sooner... I feel like I wouldn't have gotten so defeated and I would have been able to start working towards a much more peaceful internal space and headspace um, rather than getting so focused on trying to change the way I looked for a different headspace. So without further ado, here is the affirmation that I have for this episode. It is my beauty extends much deeper than my surface. My beauty extends much deeper than my surface. I also want to say really quick, another thing that came to my mind, this was the other thing I want to talk about. It's basically the fact that every person's body is so different and unique. And for the longest time, like I said, I was trying to look a specific certain way because I thought that was what the beauty standard was. And I thought that's what was attractive and desirable. But then when I started to kind of speak a little bit more kindly to myself, I, and honestly practicing gratitude because it's uh, started to train my brain to look for the beautiful things that were around me. And I started to see like other strangers bodies or other females bodies in a more beautiful light. And I would see certain unique features on them, whether it was their face or their body that was unique to them. And I was like, whoa, that's different. And that's actually really beautiful. And I would think to myself, well, not everyone else has that, but I still think it's beautiful. And so it kind of, kind of, I still remember that kind of revelation moment of like, maybe it's not about all looking the same. It's about kind of embracing your own unique features that makes you beautiful. And like, for me, I used to really hate, I used to feel like I had really broad shoulders and I just used to really not like my athletic build. I thought it was like something that was deemed unattractive. And to me now I see it as something that's unique about me. Like, I think that's like a what makes me me. It's a makes, you know, it's a less common kind of physique build for my body. And so I've decided and made the choice to appreciate those differences as a uniqueness, as a rarity, as something that's special to me. And that's helped me as well, see the beauty in it because it's more rare and allowed me to just find the beauty in that and appreciate that and recognize that. So that's kind of the last thing I want to leave you guys with is like, don't feel so pressured that you need to look like someone you see online or a model or the person next to you. Like look at yourself. Like there is truly only one of you. So you, every single one of us is rare and unique. There's no two of us that are exactly the same. So use that as your power that no one is you use it as your power and look in the mirror see the things that are unique to you and appreciate those things because they're a rarity. See the beauty in those things because they're special about you. And I think that's another way to help you find more beauty and self-love within yourself. So that's it for this episode, you guys. I really, really appreciate your guys' time taking, you know, the time you took to listen to this episode. If this did impact you in any which way, it would mean the world to me if you could share this with a loved one who you feel like who may need to hear this, a family member, maybe post it on your Instagram story as well, because that kind of organic word of mouth sharing helps this podcast grow and ultimately reach more people, which is always my goal. Also leaving a rating and review also does wonders as well for helping this podcast. So I really appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you again for taking the time to listen. I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode, which is next Wednesday. Peace out.